In this video, we're going to perform a number of operations with f of x and g of x. Our first one is f of x plus g of x. You can also see this written this way. And whenever we're adding functions together, all we want to do is to combine like terms. So like terms have the same variables and same exponents. So we have x squared plus 7x plus 8x squared minus 1. So x squared and 8x squared are like terms. They have the same variables with the same exponents. So this becomes 9x squared. 7x doesn't have a like term. There are no other terms that have an x attached, so that's that. And then we have the constant minus 1. Here's our result of f plus g. And since this is a polynomial, our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. For our second one, you can also see this written as f of x minus g of x. So what we need to do is to distribute the negative to all of g of x and then just like addition, combine like terms. So we're going to have f of x comes first, so we write that down. And we're subtracting g of x. So you're sub distributing the negative to both of the terms that's behind it. So that negative has to distribute, be multiplied by the first term, and it has to be multiplied by the second term as well. This is what we mean by distribute. So we're going to have x squared plus 7x minus 8x squared plus 1. Now we combine our like terms. x squared minus 8x squared gives us a negative 7x squared. And once again, 7x is the, doesn't have any like terms. And plus 1. Once again, our result is a polynomial. And since it's a polynomial, our domain is going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. Our next operation is multiplication, where it can also be seen as f of x with a dot, a closed dot in between. You can also see this as two functions written directly beside each other. All of this means multiplication. So we have x squared plus 7x, 8x squared minus 1. And it's up to you how you like to multiply these together. Some people use the acronym of FOIL. You multiply the first two terms together, which will give us 8x to the fourth. You multiply the outer two terms together, x squared times negative 1. You multiply the two inner terms together, 56x cubed. You multiply the last two terms together, negative 7x. And we like to write our polynomials in what we call standard form. So you start with the highest exponent and you work your way down. Some people like to say they distribute. So you would take x squared and multiply it by both terms. And then you would take 7x and multiply by both terms. This is just another way of doing the same thing we did with FOIL. So we have 8x to the 4th minus x squared plus 56x cubed minus 7x. And as you can see, we get the same exact thing from FOIL. Another way to do it as well is called the box method. So you bake a box large enough. so that you can put both functions on each side. So we have x squared and 7x. We have 8x squared minus 1. And the way we fill in the box is we multiply the corresponding rows and columns. So for this box, I'm multiplying 8x squared times x squared to give us 8x to the fourth. For this box, I'm multiplying negative 1 and that x squared to give me negative x squared. Here, I'm multiplying 7x times the 8x squared to give me the 56x cubed. 
and 7x times negative 1 gives us negative 7x. As you can see, all three of these different methods gives you the same exact answers, just whatever method you understand best. Once again, since this is a polynomial, our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Our last operation is division. So f is on the numerator. You can also see this as f of x on top, g of x on the bottom. So when we write this out, we have x squared plus 7x divided by 8x squared minus 1. And in our course, we don't have to simplify this any further. And this is not a polynomial. There are variables in the denominator. So this is a rational equation. And when you have rational equations, you have to make sure that you never end up with zero in your denominator. We don't care what the numerator is. Zero can never be in the denominator because this is undefined. So we always want to prevent that situation from happening. So to do so, we will take whatever's in our denominator, set it equal to zero, set it not equal to zero. What we're doing is finding the excluded the values, the values that we cannot use, the values that we cannot have because it makes our denominator zero. So when solving this, we have 8x squared cannot be equal to 1. So opposite of subtracting 1, we're adding 1. Opposite of multiplying by 8, we're going to divide both sides by 8. And now we're going to do the opposite of squaring, which is the square root. And whenever we take the square root, we must include our plus or minus sign. So now we're going to simplify this into plus or minus 1, because square root of 1 is 1, over square root of 8. So in math, there are certain things that we don't like. We don't like zero in denominators. We don't like negatives under the radical signs, unless we're talking about complex solutions. We don't like writing fractions that aren't simplified. So here, we do not like having a radical sign in our denominator. So the process of getting rid of that is called rationalization. And when there's just one term in the denominator, the way we simplify that is we just multiply the numerator and the denominator by whatever's in the denominator. So this will now become plus or minus square root of 8 all over square root of 64, because we're multiplying the 8 and 8, and square root of 64 is just 8. So we can simplify square root of 8 to be 2 square root of 2 all over 8. So our final simplified answer for our excluded values will be plus or minus square root of 2 over 4. And how we simplified square root of 8, we found the factors of 8 were 1 is a perfect square, so we did 4 times 2. And then the square root of 4 is 2, so that's how 2 comes out. So now with this value, what we want to do is find our domain. So our excluded values are the x values that we cannot use. We cannot use plus or minus square root of 2 over 4. So let's do a number line. Here's our number line. We have a negative square root of 2 all over 4. We have a positive square root of 2 all over 4. And we can use any values that we want except for those. So our domain, we always go from left to right. So our domain would be negative infinity to negative square root of 2 all over 4, parentheses, because we cannot be equal to that value, union, everything in between these two, negative square root of 2 all over 4, positive square root of 2 all over 4, parentheses, union, everything that's on the right, square root of 2 all over 4, to positive infinity. This will be our domain.